Okay, let me, let's get started. I thank you all for, for being here. I just want to point out, I, and I hope I get every, all the representatives, senators who are here, but we have representatives Harris and Frankel, and you'll be hearing from both of them in, in a minute. Uh, in addition, we have Representative Briggs, Johnson Harrell, McClinton. We have uh, Representative Madden, Representative Kim, Representative Zabel. Who did I miss? Did I get everybody? Okay. Senators Williams and Costa. Miss anybody? Johnson Harrell. Huh? Representative Johnson Harrell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I got you. 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 Got you. Lovita, I got you. Okay. I've only been in politics for four and a half years. I know that what I just did was a death-defying act. I'm trying to <laughs> mention everybody's here. So if I miss anybody, I'm really sorry. But thank everybody for joining me today. This is really important. Uh, as many of you know, I was going to do this yesterday, and all of us were planning to be here. Uh, but unfortunately, just hours before the press conference was scheduled to occur, um, Philadelphia uh, was once again uh, uh, plagued by uh, another example of gun violence. A man wielding a gun shot six Philadelphia police officers. He held two other hosti uh, officers hostage, uh, and he terrorized countless uh, other families during a standoff that lasted late in the, into the night. Um, just a side thing, I mean, that, that was a terrible example of, of uh, really uh, bad things that can be done. Uh, but it was just another uh, event in a long string of events. On Wednesday, a 20-year-old was shot and killed in South Philadelphia. Uh, unfortunately, gun violence is just too much of an ordinary part. It didn't make the front page, as, as the uh, uh, shooter did on Wednesday, uh, but it's too much of a part of our communities like Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, York, my own small town. Uh, we, we have have suffered too much of this. Um, the point is that man in Philadelphia had enough ammunition and weapons to hold dozens of Philadelphia police officers at bay for almost eight hours. Why was that? Why would anyone need that? What's more, countless acts of gun violence occurred across the Commonwealth. As I said, on the same day, a 20-year-old was shot and killed in South Philadelphia. We need to do something to stop gun violence all across Pennsylvania. Too many Pennsylvanians have died from gun violence. Too many have lost loved ones to gun violence. Too many live every day in fear of being shot on the sidewalk, in their neighborhood, in a grocery store, at school, or at a concert. We need to protect all of our lives everywhere in Pennsylvania. Last week, I stood in the rotunda and I called for action. We need to fix our weak, gun laws in Pennsylvania and pass reforms focused on increasing safety and reducing danger to our citizens. But within, with each day that passes, alarming numbers of Pennsylvanians are losing their lives to gun violence because every day we delay in doing this. It's another day where we lose the right to live our lives free of fear that is uh, surrounding our lack of action. So the executive order I'm signing is not an impulsive decision made in the wake of the recent mass shootings. Rather, it's the result of months of work by my administration, working with partners to find real, tangible solutions that focus on reducing gun violence, on reducing the number of people killed and terrorized by guns in our commonwealth. The Second Amendment does not supersede the inalienable right we all have to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Every human being, every Pennsylvanian is endowed with these rights. And it's my duty, and it's all of our duty, to protect them for every Pennsylvanian. That's what this executive order is all about. I'm starting by announcing Charles Ramsey, and I ask you today whether you like to be called Commissioner, Mr. Chairman, and he said Charles. <laughs> so, Charles Ramsey, who's the current chair of the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, but as you know, he was also the former commissioner, police commissioner in Philadelphia. He's going to be my new special advisor charged with coordinating and leading our gun reform uh, effort. This executive order also establishes the Office of Gun Violence Prevention within the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime uh, and Delinquency and the Division of Violence Prevention within the Department of Health. These two new offices will work together to tackle gun violence from both the gun safety and a public health perspective. Today, or together, they will target three key areas of gun violence. 
First, community gun violence. Second, mass shootings. Third, domestic gun violence and suicides. Let me start with the first one. Community gun violence is going to be addressed through increased training for state and municipal police and data sharing, data sharing, which will help us identify trends and create tailored solutions to each community's needs. We will work on prevention tactics like increasing school emotional, social, and behavioral supports and bolstering evidence-based juvenile justice programs. And we'll support and expand municipal gun buyback programs through the Pennsylvania State Police to reduce the number of unwanted guns in our communities. Second, we will deal with mass shootings by holding more active shooter training for state and municipal police and state agencies. We will also use prevention tactics by working with the Pennsylvania State Police again to put a greater focus on domestic terrorism and a see something, send something campaign encouraging people to report suspicious uh, suspicions uh, or of potential mass shootings by text message. I'm also enrolling Pennsylvania in the States for Gun Safety Coalition, which is a multi-state partnership that shares information and conducts research to combat gun violence. Finally, we will tackle gun domestic violence and suicides. I'm directing the Suicide Prevention Task Force to make immediate recommendations on steps to reduce suicides by gun. Their work will be supplemented by data collected by a new suicide death review team within our Department of Health. The ultimate outcome of this is to determine what we can do as a commonwealth to decrease deaths by suicide. Our agencies will build on mental health stigma campaigns to encourage Pennsylvanians to seek treatment. Most people with mental illness are not violent, but for those individuals who are struggling with mental illness and show an increased risk of violence, early identification, early intervention, and evidence-based mental health treatments are key. We will also build up the Student Assistance Program, a critical program that allows educators who work with students every day to make mental health referrals. The Office of Gun Violence Prevention will also be charged with coordinating a system of focused police deterrence in neighborhoods and cities where violence is most extreme. This executive order also establishes the Special Council on Gun Violence within the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. This council will meet within 60 days of the signing of this executive order and will make recommendations to the Special Advisor and the PCCD on ways to reduce incidents of gun violence in Pennsylvania. It will be comprised of agency secretaries, designees from each of the PCCD's existing subcommittees and members of the General Assembly. We will rely on them to include gun owners, victims of gun-related violence, criminal justice experts, and healthcare practitioners in the discussion around practical recommendations to enhance this executive order. To better understand the scope of gun violence, including contributing factors, we'll be establishing a violence data dashboard similar to the opioid data dashboard. We'll partner with state universities to research the cause and consequences of gun violence and identify trends to help us better predict and prevent gun violence from happening anywhere in Pennsylvania. And I will be directing every state department to engage in an effort to combat the systemic causes of violence, including poverty, hopelessness, a lack of economic opportunities, mental and behavioral health supports. All of the actions I'm taking today strike a balance between freedom and safety. Finally, I cannot work alone in this endeavor. And I'm asking for the support of the General Assembly to make the legislative changes necessary to protect the lives of all Pennsylvanians. First, I will seek legislation to mandate the reporting of lost or stolen guns so that we can cut down on the number of illegal gun sales and keep guns out of the hands of known criminals like the Philadelphia shooter. Second, I'm asking for the General Assembly to pursue safe, safe storage legislation so people who are in danger of harming themselves or others cannot gain access in an easy way to guns. Third, I will continue to push for the swift passage of the Extreme Risk Protection Order Act that's also known as the Red Flag Law. And last, I will, fourth, I will con continue to push for state-level universal background checks on all gun purchases and other common sense gun violence reduction legislation. It's my honor and my duty to guide our Commonwealth. I'm proud to be governor. By making and finding the right middle ground here, I think we can 
create the best Pennsylvania. We want a good Pennsylvania for everybody, one that recognizes the rights embedded in the Second Amendment, but also one that recognizes all of our rights to live free of fear. The conversation of where this middle ground, where this important middle ground lies, is important. It's long, long overdue. And I look forward to continuing this conversation with the legislature, with the people of Pennsylvania, as we move into the start of the fall session. Now, it's my great pleasure to introduce Commissioner Chairman Charles Ramsey, who, who unfortunately is going to have to leave right after he speaks. But I really appreciate you doing what you're doing. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you very much, uh, Governor. It's really an honor to serve uh, on such a vital, important issue as dealing with gun violence. And also, I want to thank you for coming up with this strategy, which I believe is unprecedented at the state level, to uh, address this issue, not just as a law enforcement or criminal justice issue, but as a public health issue as well. Uh, and I promise we will meet all the deadlines and give you something that is actionable that can really improve the quality of safety and security throughout the Commonwealth. You know, um, this whole issue of mass shootings is normally what gets national attention, uh, whether it's El Paso or Dayton or Pittsburgh. Uh, it's incidents like that where the national media comes out and for a day or two, they'll spend time actually talking about gun violence in America. But the reality is mass shootings take place every day on the streets of our city uh, uh, across the entire country. One person, two people here, three over there. All life has value. You don't have to lose it in large quantities before we start to pay attention to something that is as pressing an issue as gun violence in our communities. Suicide. More people die by suicide than any other means. What about children? I can't tell you how many scenes I've gone to. I've been an uh, 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 active member of law enforcement 47 years, where a, a young child finds a gun in a home and accidentally pulls the trigger and shoots a sibling or shoots themselves. Tragic. Something has to be done to reduce gun violence, whether it's by criminals, whether it's accidental, whether it's suicide, whatever it is, we need to do everything we can to protect our people here. And Governor, I just want to thank you for taking this step to do it at the state level, because if we wait around for the federal government to do it, it's not going to happen anytime soon. And so doing it here, Pennsylvania, we can be the model for the rest of the country, and we will be the model for the rest of the country. So. So again, thank you very much for this opportunity. We will not let you down. And thank all of you gathered here today for all the work that you've done in the past and all that you're about to do in the future. So thank you. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce someone who I've had the pleasure of working with for, oh, I guess, 10 years now. And that's our great Senator Anthony Williams. Thank you. Um, let me thank um, a few folks before I make some comments. One, I want to thank the leader of my caucus, Jay Costa, who in June uh, allowed me to circulate a letter on behalf of our Democratic caucus to send to the governor um, announcing that Philadelphia was in an epidemic situation with regard to the level of gun violence. Um, and he, um, as the leader of our caucus, did not have to do that. And so I want to thank him first. Cindy Cashman and Mike Burnell, I don't know where they are, but I want to thank you publicly for, on behalf of the Commonwealth, on behalf of Philadelphia, on behalf of me, who have spent countless hours text, yelling and screaming, and you all acted with dignity and frankly came up with a plan that is extraordinary. I mean extraordinary, and so I want to thank them. And least, last but not least, our governor. And I will tell you, I'm going to try to make through my comments, but this is emotional. It's emotional for me. This governor has done something that no other elected official in this country has ever done. 
No president, no governor, no mayor has ever taken the politics out of whether you have a right to have a gun or not and recognized the dignity of human beings is first and most important. And because of that, let us thank this man. Let us thank him right now for his work. <laughs> Yesterday, a number of elected officials gathered in Philadelphia, as they should have, um, to comment and demand changes on long-awaited rules regarding our guns. Today, we gather, rather than waiting and reacting, we are acting for the first time on behalf of a nation and most importantly, on behalf of a very, very scared public. On average, there is a human being who's murdered every single day in Pennsylvania by a gun. These people reside across Pennsylvania. And I will also tell you that, unfortunately, the five officers or six officers who were shot in that neighborhood, literally the next day, five more people were shot. And to the commissioner's point, this is a long-standing crisis that has not gone recognized by the national press and, frankly, not many people at all. We stood there at a conference talking about the five officers, but those five people who were murdered or no, shot the same day in the same neighborhood didn't hit the Today Show, the morning shows, or any national press. But they're still human beings. They're not drug dealers. They're not criminals. Their grandmothers, there's parents, there's children who are being murdered every day in Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Erie, Harrisburg, York, Butler County, Clearfield County have all suffered this epidemic of gun violence, either through suicides, domestic violence, community carnage like we see in Philadelphia. This is a stain on humanity. And the fault line is that what we were required to do constitutionally to protect citizens, American citizens, foreign and domestically, we have failed. We've allowed our perspective on an inanimate object to be the focus of our attention, a gun, as, to, as opposed to the human beings that are being sacrificed at the altar of politics. Understand that this message is not about taking your gun. This is about preserving a life. This is not a Democrat nor Republican perspective. This is not an urban nor rural perspective. This is not a black or white. This is about death. Death in a country that is the greatest country in the world that we irresponsibly have not acted upon. This plan talks about all the complex levels that one must engage in if they truly are to reduce this level of gun violence in America. Understand something. There will be those who will react to this press conference and will suggest that, what can you do about it? Well, the same thing you can do about reducing gun violence is the same billions of dollars we spent on cancer. Billions of dollars on cancer. Billions of dollars on getting to the moon. Nothing without a guarantee but a commitment to the dignity and human experience on this earth. That's what this plan represents. It is layered in, in very sophisticated ways. It touches upon one's mental health, one's desires, one's angers, policing, human services, and community engagement. But most importantly, I want people in my neighborhood to understand tonight, tonight, you have a governor and a government which has heard you and is responding and is putting one of the most experienced sage, wise people in charge, Charles Ramsey, to guide us on this grand experiment. I cannot tell you how grateful we are that Charles Ramsey has decided to come out of retirement again for the 99th time. <laughs> okay. Uh, to guide us on this experience. But I could not be any more impressed with the person that the governor has chosen. I will close with this. It is my hope and my prayer that I one day can stand at a microphone before I retire to say that we've done some effective work in this measurement of reducing gun violence in America, in Pennsylvania, and certainly in Philadelphia. But as long as this work remains, as long as this crisis exists, 
all of us will remain vigilant. We will return to the General Assembly to have those debates over what we do with guns. But most importantly today, for the first time in the nation, a single soul has stood up for the true integrity of life. A man that I will always be grateful for, my governor, Tom Wolf. I want to thank him and his staff again for their work. My partner in the Senate, who will be fighting these battles over gun reform legislation that we will all be acting upon, a true leader in the greatest sense of the word, and it has allowed me to pen, paper, pen to paper when it came to those claims and concerns, my friend, Senator Jay Costa. Well, thank you very much, Senator Williams, and I truly appreciate those very kind comments, and it's certainly uh, been a pleasure for me to stand with you in our caucus as you take on the leadership role as it relates to how we address this very important issue. So thank you for your work that you're doing and your consistent commitment to do better, making certain that we do better collectively. Governor Wolf, thank you for standing up and doing what needs to be done. Folks, let's be clear. There's never been and probably won't be for a long time a more meaningful, more significant executive order penned by any governor in this country than what we're seeing today. But let's be clear. The governor and his team, and I want to thank Commissioner Ramsey for stepping forward to be able to implement what needs to be done in the various programs we're talking about. But when you think about the very thoughtful, comprehensive approach that the governor's taking to try to address this really important issue of gun violence in our Commonwealth, I applaud him and I applaud his folks for the work that they're doing. But more importantly, what's going to happen as we go forward to implement this? It will need the support of so many folks in our community. It will need the support, certainly, of the agencies who will be responsible for administering some of the programs that we talked about. It will be important for our legislative body to work and provide the resources, not just this year, but as we go forward, to make certain that they're able to implement the programs that you're talking about to continue to allow us to remain safe. It's going to be important as I look out and I see moms demand action and I think about ceasefire and all the organizations that have been working very closely with us to be able to try to make certain that we raise the awareness how important it is for us to address gun violence and address some of the things that the governor's talking about. It's certainly about gun violence in our community, and as Senator Williams talked about, my home community, the city of Pittsburgh, we certainly suffered with our tragedies that were very high profile. But we also recognize day after day after day, when I look at the Post-Gazette, or I look at the Tribune Review newspaper, when I wake up in the morning, and one of the headlines, one of the stories that came from the night before, is some person was shot somewhere in our region. It happens every day. It happens throughout this Commonwealth and our country. This governor, this executive order are going to take steps to address that. So I thank them for being able to do that. But it's also about many other areas. Senator Williams talked about and the commissioner talked about suicide. When you think about two-thirds of suicides in this Commonwealth, in this country, are done with guns. Access to these weapons are extremely important to be able to reduce that as much as possible. The investments that we're going to make in mental health, community mental health, making certain that we're able to address and talk to folks and have the idea of what's taking place in our neighborhoods and our community and the data that will be coming from that type of interaction with people in our neighborhoods and our community is so extremely important to allow us to implement the things that Commissioner Ramsey will be working on. That's what this is about. And on the legislative side, while we've not taken the steps that we should have, we're going to continue to fight on our Senate floors, we do every time we get there and we talk about what steps we can take as a legislative body to supplement or to complement the work that the governor and this executive order will do. Extreme risk orders and some of the things that I think three-fourths of the general public recognizes we should be doing. We should take the time to be able to enact these things that are really supportive by the public. Democrats, Republicans, urban, rural, doesn't matter. But things like extreme risk orders. The governor talked about gun buyback programs. We talked about safe storage legislation. We talked about universal background checks. Those are some of the things that we need to be talking about in the legislature. And I call upon my colleagues, as so many others have, have done over the course of the past several weeks, to stand up, step forward, allow us to have a conversation, a de definition about some of these issues and how we move forward. If you don't want to stand up and do it, let those of us who want to work along with the folks who are here today, who I'm so very proud to stand with, let us take the lead. Let us address these issues. Let's get to work and get things done. Governor, thank you for being such a thoughtful uh, way in which you're addressing this, and it's going to be a model for the rest of the country. Thank you. Now, it is my honor to introduce someone who's working in the Senate and while working in the House, who's been an outstanding job as the House Whip, House Democratic Whip, Representative from Philadelphia, Jordan Harris. Um, let me first thank Governor Wolf 
uh, for his action on this today. I mean, this is not a first step. Governor, I remember, I think it was almost two years ago now, when we walked uh, in southwest Philadelphia, and I showed you what far too many Philadelphians know, and that's the candles and the teddy bears that are makeshift memorials to the lives that are lost in my city. See, in Philadelphia, when someone loses their life, the community comes together and they put teddy bears and they put candles and handwritten notes to memorialize the life that was lost there. We went there about two years ago and then we sat and we talked with um, family members that had lost their loved ones to gun violence. We talked to the doctors in the ER who are charged daily with trying to save these lives. We talked to the morticians who have to comfort the family. We talked to the clergymen who have to try to stand and give a word when someone tragically loses their life. We then started the Gun Violence Reduction Initiative, a grant program throughout the state to go to municipalities uh, to help them uh, lower the gun violence that they see in their cities. So I thank you, Governor, not just for today, but for all of the work uh, that you've been doing and that we've been doing to address this issue. But the fact is clear that gun violence is still uh, one of the most prevalent issues in our country. In the city of Philadelphia, we are in a public health crisis. We are under attack when it comes to gun violence. Just this year, so far, our homicide rate is up by 4%. Data has shown us that through July, over the last five years, we've had 6,902 people shot in the city of Philadelphia. You know, the definition of mass shootings according to the Gun Violence Archives is when four or more people are shot in one incidence. Well, in my city, just this year, in my city, We've had eight mass shootings. Eight mass shootings in Philadelphia. Four people were shot outside of a takeout restaurant along South 31st Street in South Philadelphia, in my district. Several blocks from where I live, four people were shot. Five people were shot walking down the street in North Philadelphia on May 10th. On the weekend, uh, on the weekend there were 28 people shot in 19 different incidents of gun violence in Philadelphia. Six were shot in one incident with one fatally shot at a graduation party in Southwest Philadelphia. A graduation party. Four people were shot at the intersection just a few blocks away from my home. Seven people were shot at a cookout in the Overbrook section on July 13th. Six people were shot, one fatally, in Elmwood as they gathered to shoot a music video on July 28th. And yes, we know about the national headlines about what happened to our police officers. And we stand with those brave men and women who work every single day to protect our city. We stand with them. But just 24 hours later, there were five people shot only two miles away from that incident. No news camera. No, no, no national stories picked up that shooting or any of the other ones. So today, the first thing I want to say is to all of the people in Philadelphia, in Erie, in Harrisburg, in York, in, in Pittsburgh, across this Commonwealth, we see you. We see your pain. Your body, your life, is just as valuable as anyone else. And we're standing here with you and for you. You're not invisible, and your life does matter. To all of the mothers and fathers who had to bury their children, we see you. Your life matters, and we value you as well. Now listen, if we put up lost and stolen, if we put up uh, background checks, if we put up an assault ban, I will be the first to run to the floor and cast a yes vote. But here's one thing that I will not do. We cannot abdicate our responsibility to govern. 
We cannot abdicate our responsibility to stand up, to use our voice, but to also use our action just because we don't have all of the gun laws that we want, because we have some of those laws. And the truth of the matter is in my city, in those mass shootings, it wasn't an automatic weapon that shot those folks. It was the handguns that we see far too many of in the city of Philadelphia. So I will not abdicate the responsibility that we have to govern today and to protect all of the citizens of Philadelphia and all across this commonwealth. You know, I was, I was, I was, I was talking on social media to some of my folks and one of the young men said, one of the incidents that happened yesterday wasn't that big of a deal. The people were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And far too often we hear that. Oh, we're sorry what happened. They were just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, the truth of the matter is if you live in the city of Philadelphia, any place, any time could be the wrong place in the wrong time. And that must change. This is not a, this is, this ain't Democrat or Republican. Let me be clear. I don't care what your political party is. I live in a city where mothers send their kids to school not knowing if they'll come home at night. I live in a city where you can't even sit on your porch safely without ducking and dodging bullets. A few years ago, there was a mother sitting on the porch braiding her baby's hair. Gunshots rang out, and a three-year-old was shot and killed while her mother was braiding her hair on their porch. I don't care what political party you are a part of. I don't care what religious faith you are a part of. There has to be something in the moral fiber of all of us that says the blood that is being shattered and, and the blood that is being shed all over this commonwealth is enough. And that we have to do something, something to address the pain and the carnage that far too many of our citizens are feeling. So Governor, I appreciate and thank you for not to just today, but for all of the stuff that we've done. And I apologize because this ain't, you know, the political speech. Like, I gotta go home. I have to go home to a place where my life is not safe. And there's far too many Pennsylvanians doing that on a daily basis. Whatever it takes, whatever we have to do, wherever we will have to go, I will go. I will take any and everyone that wants to go because this must stop, it must end. There are far too many victims. There are far too many people who have lost their life to gun violence in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Time is out for the talk. We have to do action and we have to do it now. And I'm so thankful that it starts with our governor and all of you who have been working on this issue. God bless you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, uh, Representative uh, Dan Frankel from uh, Allegheny County. Thank you, thank you, Jordan, and thank you to my colleagues. Uh, I think I think you get a sense of the depth of importance of this, uh, how this issue resonates with my colleagues, uh, and that's a reflection of how it resonates uh, with our constituents and the people of Pennsylvania. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues who are here today who have been champions on this issue, and I want to single out one, one particular person, uh, our newest uh, member of the Pennsylvania Democratic Caucus, Mavita Johnson Harrell, who is uh, co-chair of the PA SAFE Caucus, a group of legislators, many of whom are here today, who are working on uh, a gun safety uh, agenda. And uh, she knows personally uh, from her own experience uh, with her family uh, what what this issue means and how it's impacted her and her community. And I think you've heard that from everybody. My community, Jay Costa's community, experienced a tragedy of enormous proportions in one of those mass shootings uh, that 
we experienced back on October 27th, 2018, 10 months ago, coming up to that uh, anniversary. And I will tell you that when I go to speak to my constituents, when I go to speak around the state, between what took place in Pittsburgh, what takes place daily on our streets, the mass shootings in Allentown and Philadelphia, what took place yesterday in Philadelphia with our police officers, the one thing I hear consistently is what are you going to do about it? What are you, our elected officials, going to do about it? The people of Pennsylvania are begging us to do something to protect them from gun violence. And today, Governor Wolf answered that call. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Governor Wolf. By collaborating between government agencies, collecting and analyzing data, and launching public education campaigns, this administration is addressing gun violence as an emergency level public health crisis. With these executive orders, our governor is marshaling every possible administrative tool to reduce our shameful levels of death and injury due to gun violence. And I want to make sure that people understand that in our cities, which experience this every day, we also have this in rural areas. The rates of gun death in our rural areas are exactly the same as they are in urban areas. They're just from different, different reasons. In our rural areas, it's from suicide. So we have an interest across this. This, is bi this should be bipartisan. It is not about urban versus rural. We are in this together. I believe that these measures that the governor is proposing today, while falling short of what I think we should be doing as a legislature, will save lives. But they do not take the place of the reforms that the General Assembly has refused to take up. We currently have about two dozen reasonable, common sense reform bills languishing in the House without so much as a committee hearing. There is so much more the Pennsylvania legislature can do to prevent tragedies. We could make it possible to temporarily remove guns from the grasp of people in crisis. We could make background checks truly universal, or we could simply allow municipalities to, do, to decide what gun laws are right for their communities. And I should also mention, when you take a look at what took place in Dayton in particular, in a, in a, in a matter of less than 60 seconds, Nine people were murdered, 27 people were seriously injured because of high-powered assault-style weapons with, uh, with large magazines. We need to do something about it. When you look at the injuries that took place, the, the, when you read about the injuries of those individuals who were wounded in Dayton or who were wounded in Pittsburgh or wounded other places, the devastation caused by these high-powered weapons is unbelievable, and it is a public health crisis. We need to do something about it. But the, the, these are just a few of the bills that uh, would help the state of Pennsylvania better protect its residents. And while these uh, allow, uh, we still would allow law-abiding individuals to be basically own uh, reasonable firearms. And I want to say that as we take a look at this agenda uh, that goes beyond uh, what the governor is able to do today, to the, the aspirational issues that we talk about in terms of a legislative agenda, some people say that it's unrealistic. I got to tell you what, there are people here today in this room who knows what can be done with powerful advocacy. We got a piece of legislation done, a meaningful piece of legislation in the last session of the legislature that takes firearms out of the hands of people who are subject to protection from abuse order. That piece of legislation will save hundreds of lives in Pennsylvania, and it is a tribute to the level of advocacy by the folks from Moms Demand Action and Ceasefire PA. They showed us the roadmap. We can get this done. It is possible to do things in Pennsylvania legislatively. They showed us how to do it. Um, but we still today have that agenda in front of us. But today, Governor Tom Wolf took important steps for a safer world. I'm so grateful to him to be able to take the steps that he has within his power and to help us and to encourage us in the legislature to take it to the next step. Tomorrow, let us carry this inspiration forward and ask the question again, 
What are we doing to reduce gun violence? Thank you, Governor Wolfen. So I am going to um, sign the executive order, then I'll come back and all of us will take questions from the podium.